All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com crowd forecast news for July 8th, 2024. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and this is episode number 437. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com, and you should be seeing my screen right now and my charts. And uh, today I've arranged for uh, Michael Filigera and Sonny Harris to join us again. And the option professor is back to moderate, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay, thanks, David, and thanks, everybody, for being here. We've got a great show coming up, and uh, the operative word today is that old Beatles song, Roll Over Beethoven, because as I look at a lot of the markets, uh, that's the song that's ringing in the back of my ear. Okay, so let's get started. We've got the S&P on the screen here. You can see it's had a nice big run uh, since last October, you know, when uh, when he started saying... Uh, the rates are going to be dropping. The rates are going to be dropping. And uh, we're here going into August and we're still waiting for that. But uh, basically, the market uh, definitely believes in it. And so let's start out with uh, Sonny. And Sonny, uh, you know, as you see, uh, how do you feel about the stock market up in this neighborhood? Oh, I, I think that we're going to hear that there's not going to be a rate cut and the market will move down. I think you're looking for a little bit of a pullback down towards a little bit of reversion trade coming up? I am. Yeah. Uh, you got any kind of timing on that uh, where you think? Is well, it a month away, a week announce, away, a year away? What is it? When are they going to announce it? They're talking. Uh, yeah. This, this week, almost every day, some fed somebody. Well, I think at the end of this month, then they go to Jackson Hole. So you got like two months before they meet again. Isn't it something like that? So they'll meet this week and they'll announce that they can't cut rates yet. Right. Market will move down. They'll, you've got two months for all the, irrational exuberance to come in and right. hope that the next time is a rate cut and at that point i don't know if there will or will not be one because uh if the economy continues to slow they're going to have to do a rate cut to keep us from tanking right um and uh, they'll figure that out while they're chasing elk in jackson hole is that what they're going to be doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Michael, you know, what's your read on this uh, S&P 500? That we are uh, topping, mm -hmm. um, and I'll give this more, a little bit more detail of the topping in a minor, a minor third wave, which is not, it's pretty big, but still not a great big top. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we pull back in a minor fourth wave. Uh, my, my downside targets are the April lows. Mm -hmm. So, and then we go up again, make new all-time highs again, finish another wave, come back down again towards those April lows uh, for another pullback. And yet again, we go rising back up, uh, which is likely going to take us into the end of the year. And so I still have upside targets about 6,000, 6,200 sure. in the S&P. Yeah. So basically, but uh, like some people have said, even the biggest bulls, uh, Tom Lee uh, put a comment in while I was hearing him being interviewed. He says, you know, he's optimistic because he thinks earnings are going to be quite a bit higher and that the market will go up to a higher neighborhood, 58, 50, uh, 6,000, whatever. Yeah. But he did mention something about uh, there could be some bumps. Yeah. And I guess what you're mentioning here would be a bump. Uh, yeah, I just, mm -hmm. I just a little bump, you know, it's a little bumps in the road. Yes. I live at a golf course and they have a, a speed bump that uh, if you go over it fast, you uh, take out your oil pan underneath your car. That's how high the bump is. So this could be a good sized bump was my point. Huh? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Can those golf carts even climb that bump? Well, I don't use, I have a car. So when I go over there and say, I forgot that the bump is coming up because I'm distracted. I've, uh, I've done a little bumping too much. But I, the point was, is that speed, the speed bumps can be uh, very, very small, or they can be stuff that can uh, hit your oil pan if you hit them hard enough. And so, like I say, if, if you're loading up the wagon at 5,600 on the S&P and you get a uh, pullback like Michael's talking about, that's going to be more that would uh, hurt, hurt the oil pan a little bit. Yes. You know? Yes um all right well uh I, you know let's look at the um the um uh, qqq and uh and see if that uh can give us a little bit of an insight because you know are those going to have uh, as much of a pullback uh because oh. they're so heavily weighted to the ai and the tech and all that kind of stuff oh, what yes, do you they will yeah yes, they will. well um sunny what's your gut feeling on that one qqq hang on oh is, do you have it up david yeah he's got it up there all right uh, yeah, we're going to use this it's charts. going up until it's through going up. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, you ju it's just climbing and climbing and climbing. One, three, five, extended fifth. Yeah. It, it could go on up who knows how long. Yeah. You need some evidence of a turn. You can't stand in front of a Mack truck and think you're going to come out healthy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, like I say, the trees don't, you're, you're going to find point of the trees don't grow to the sky and don't step in front of a Mack truck. So, you know, it's yeah. a tough, it's a tough place to start putting money to work because of the high advance. And don't but, stand uh, in front of an we, oncoming train. Yeah. We've got uh, earnings dead ahead. So, you know, uh, two mm -hmm. of the big, yeah, two of the big guys, uh, they uh, announced right away pretty much at uh, July 23rd, Microsoft and Google. And then uh, Amazon uh, follows them um, on the 1st of August and Meta's on the 31st. So you got all four of those guys uh, that are going to give you a hint on how, you know, um, the uh, AI is going with Microsoft and, uh, and Amazon. And you're also going to get an idea of how the communications uh, are going with uh, Meta and Google. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of information. Uh, what are we at the seventh, eighth now? So within three weeks, so you're going to have uh, facts behind the fiction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's always interesting. And they're pricing in good news right now because all the ones you mentioned are up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I say, that's where the money's going because people are saying if we're at this level and if I'm stuck, I'd rather be stuck with those guys that uh, have big cash balances on their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And also have got uh, a moat around their companies and they also are into the hottest area, which is, uh, you know, the AI and how to apply the AI. So there's a good reason why they, they uh, load up on those, because if you do get stuck, you know, those wouldn't be the worst ones to have to hold for a long time. I have a little bit different spin on, on the cues, actually on the cues, the spiders and IWM and all of them, if you'd like to hear. Sure. Um, first of all, in the queues, I see five hundred. Okay, we're, we're three. We're three dollars below it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no big <clears throat> so deal it's there. Pretty much a given. Yeah, and I actually have a little bit of resistance just above that as well. But more importantly, <clears throat> what for those of us that follow and trade options, this is going to be interesting, Jim. The buildup of calls at each starting with the June twenty first expiration which is long gone mm -hmm. that that expiration was over a trillion dollars in notional value a trillion dollars and that was just the spx alone and so you can go through all of these the the, the big etfs and the and the uh, the other indexes and find the same thing but now i moved out then we had the june 28th uh quarterly expiration also call heavy and a lot of that's gotten rolled out so what i'm doing i'm looking at the july 19th then i'm looking at august then i'm looking at september so it's actually not even going on that cycle it's going on the uh march june september december cycle if you look at those expirations they are so call heavy mm -hmm. and so what that <clears throat> kind of tells me is like they're still doing what a lot of us call the dispersion trade, which is they're selling the VIX and they're taking that money and buying the individual component volatility, which is like NVIDIA, Apple, et cetera, et cetera. So then what, what happens is the dealer has to go and buy the underlying. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But in any case, I see that that what I'm not sure what's going to crack it. Mm -hmm. I do think we'll see somewhat of a reversal, even if we kind of drop into this minor fourth wave that I'm talking about. I think we'll start to see a crack. And for me right now, I get it. Well, we got the earnings. And so my thought process has been, well, they'll stop that process and start to focus on earnings. I don't see them focusing on earnings. I mean, yeah, today. You hear, okay, you better watch JP Morgan and Bank of America. It's like, oh yeah, bully, bully. They report on the 12th. Okay. So, but if that's how it's going to go, but I think the bigger play is just the massive amount of calls, mm -hmm. buying calls, selling puts. And if we look below these strikes, even some of the lower ones, there's nothing. There's nothing. So they're all betting heavily for up, mm -hmm. heavily. So I think that it, it could just fall over and under its own weight. 
Yeah, it's possible. I just uh, doing a little homework here, trying to find out, you know, if you thought if a person thought that uh, there was going to be some disappointment in these earnings or maybe in the guidance yeah. uh, coming from the big four that I just mentioned, which obviously would have a dramatic effect on a heavily weighted index like this, right. uh, the, the uh, going out to the middle of next month. So it's a little about a five week option. Mm -hmm. uh, 490 puts were going for, uh, you know, about six bucks. And if we were to go down to that line there, which is, um, where's that line come in? Uh, the moving average, the blue line. Can we see that? That comes in at 465, let's call it. Uh, that means the option could drop to 25 bucks. So, you know, that would give you an in the money option of $25 and you're risking, you know, five or $6. And that's a pretty good home run if, in fact, uh, there was some disappointment. And if you look at that RSI, you know, it is starting to smell a little bit like a divergence because <laughs> it is underneath the last time we were up there. So if you combine the risk reward of uh, five to one and you say that uh, obviously it's a come line bet, uh, yeah. meaning you're expecting something that no one's expecting, which is uh, either earnings or guidance are going to miss. Um you know, that's a, that's a contrarian bet that would uh, would pay off pretty handsomely if that, in fact, happened. And your risk I, is limited. Yeah, I agree with you. One thing I want to add, that's good observation, by by the way, in the RSI. But I think what of note is that the RSI topped when when the Qs were just above 480, mm -hmm. at that high. Now they've gone up another $16, $17. Yeah, right. And there, see, that's divergent, folks, as Jim mentioned. That's divergent. Oh, believe me, I, I, I love that. But, it, you know, I also like to have a companion called some moving average that's rolling over, either Absolutely. on the five day, the month, five day or monthly, or give me something. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't necessarily have that. But, but more importantly, yeah. oh, we but could. when the RSI is showing that type of a divergence, it's also telling me that, that the rally, this gigantic push, is limited, not broad based. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, the beauty of a moving average, it's kind of like a very fast linebacker who's running after a running back. Uh, it, they, they're moving towards you every day and you yeah. better keep running or else that very fast linebacker is going to catch you. So and he you weighs know, a whole lot more than you. <laughs> so you basically, that's why I like the moving averages because, you know, the higher it goes, the averages keep chasing it all the way up. And then at some point, you know, uh, there's always some point where they lose their legs. There so, you, um, you know, yeah. like I say, we don't have a lot of stuff pointing down right now, but don't forget these averages are following the market pretty well. So when they do turn, you should have some kind of a hint. If you combine that with an RSI and cheap put options, that's the recipe of a contrarian bet. Yeah. You know, oh, what do you all think about this uh, declining average volume? Do you think um, that's just a function of summertime you know, price going up or mm -hmm. summer or? Do you think that means anything? I, I think it's accumulation and it's going to break through that and come on up. So the late volume you're seeing is something that's a prelude to heavier volume on the upside. I would say so. Yeah. I got you. I'm yeah. not a volume uh, analyst very much. You know what I mean? I, I, I've i never done a lot of volume work. Do you Have you, Michael, done much volume I uh, have. analysis? <clears throat> I actually, I think it just... It goes along with the fact that what the RSI is telling me that that the divergence is showing that it's not broad based. So we're getting, you know, the volumes are, I think, summer. So it's a lot slower. But still, I feel that a lot of it is based on that it's not it's concentrated in a much smaller group of stocks that remain in play. And even that, they're going underneath. They're going way underneath, way underneath um, what the volumes should be. Well, let's so. switch gears a little bit here. And let's, uh, we went over the stock indexes and I guess we all agree that they're very, very strong and they're very, very elevated. And so the risk of some type of a uh, reversion is there, but there's not a lot of evidence of it. So basically yeah. it's a strong market and you either, you know, don't mind buying into it uh, all the way up uh, or you are, uh, you know, waiting for the pullback to, uh, to um, uh, revert and then maybe look at that as a buying opportunity. Yep. Um, and then if you're an option player, you know, uh, you might look towards uh, what are the calls going for, because obviously 
when you do a covered right at these prices, you're agreeing to buy, sell your stock at a very high level and the premium should be pretty fat. So high, high uh, agreement on strike and a, a fat premium, you know, that's something that I find interesting. Right. So uh, let's turn over to the, uh, some of these other markets that are moving, like the uh, crude market. You know, we had a big 14% jump. Last week, they said the crude inventories were down the most in a year, and now the prices are rolling over. So can we put crude up there and find out what the heck's going on there? Because uh, it's either just having a little bit of a pullback and it's going to start taking off again and take out 88, and maybe go up to 100, 110, or uh, this thing has lost its steam. So uh, let's start with um, Sonny and what's your read? On my, <clears throat> pardon me, I have a cold. Um, on my chart with the sunny bands on it, it does look like it's rolled over. That's a sell signal. Mm -hmm. And the sell signal will go more than likely down to the DMA, which is at 81.06. See how, oh, I, you can't see it. Uh, the, but the DMA is flattening out. And so I'm, and the histogram is red bars. So I'm expecting it to move down a little bit. Yeah, it does. Uh, that it does look like. But you're saying uh, there could be a little bit more downside because you can see those moving averages might be a little bit of an attractor. Yeah, and you can see that 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 is the blue one, the twenty one, David. I mean twenty. It's uh, it's fifty is blue and two hundred is gold. But I can I can change it if you want. No, that's okay. It's it's. Oh, those it's, are basic ones that people look at. Yeah, it's looking for that blue one. Yeah. So there still could be a little bit more downside. The RSI is pointing down. Mm -hmm. And we have a, another attractor where we went one, two, three, four, five waves down. And in the fourth wave, it went up and touched the blue line, the 50. And then it broke through it after that and went up. So I think it's going to come back down and test that level. Mm -hmm. Michael, how do you see it? Um, I actually... I, I see what Sonny mentioned that off of that high just below 96 or just above 94. Um, it looks like to me it did do a five down. Then it kind of did mm. my best looked at is maybe a three up, three down. And now, but I, I think that what we're working through is a stronger, I would be off that 72 and a half low or 73 low, whatever it was. Um, and then we're coming back up. I think I think we do pull back, but I'm going to be listening to Sunny Sunny Band because <laughs> 81 81 60, I think you said Sunny makes a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah, uh, and then it stops and it turns, and we put mm -hmm. another leg up mm -hmm. and likely get above 88, maybe make an attempt at 90 before we pull back one more time. I think we'll go up to 85. Okay. So we'll still have some resistance at that point that it's been stalling yeah, out at. Some, yeah. yeah. Well, I think from April. What he's what 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 David just drew was also as good. It's 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 kind of wedging. So it might just get up to the top of that wedge, maybe pop a little bit more. 85 would be appropriate, just like you said, Sonny. Um, and but then come back down and retest that bottom line, that bottom side. I agree with that. Yeah, today's low is kind of interesting as well. That 82 number, I had a little bit of activity there on the one-year graph coming in uh, with the one-year moving average coming in around that 82 even. So you guys see any other supported 82? Because it's bounced a little bit off of it. Um, I I think it's just a bounce. I mean, this is yeah. a daily chart, so it's a little bit more difficult. So if I if I had a lower term time frame, yeah. you, you, could, you could say, oh, yeah, it's just bouncing off of that 82 low, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Because on the one year, the one year graph, I got a big uh, uh, um, vacuum down to like even seventy nine fifty. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of like you guys have right there with the gold and the blue. Yeah, I mean, if it breaks eighty two, it seems to me like uh, it's got an air pocket there. And, yeah. it's, and yeah. I got to go quickly because it went up so fast. I think people, yeah. I, I knew people that on a cycle basis, they were really looking for it to maybe get up to about seventy eight and then roll over again and drop back down to seventy. That did not happen. So this, this I, wedge I think, extends back even even farther. Yeah. No, in yeah. the longer term graphs, it's in a big tight window. So you know, like I say, if it can get above eighty five and ninety, uh, one hundred or one ten is not off the oh, table. Yeah. At all. And talk talk about who will not be able to lower interest rates then. Yeah. 
Well, like <laughs> I say, you know, uh, there's not always a rhyme and a reason to what they do there anyway. Well, that's true, but I'm telling you, yeah. if, if we see fuel, even though we don't include it in the CPI anymore, right? You know, um, you know, ex food and energy. I mean, come on, what what are we getting killed by food? And well, energy? one reason they could drop the rates is if uh, oil goes way up, that means the consumer is spending a lot more money on his fuel, which means he doesn't have money to go out to eat. He doesn't have money to go out to buy the clothes or whatever. You know what I mean? You don't have the money to go out and buy the food. That's what I'm saying. So the bottom line is that the higher energy could actually cause uh, them to uh, lower rates because that could cause uh, spending to go off the cliff. And as soon as that starts happening, they freak out pretty good. We'll wait. We'll wait. all to wait and see. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. You know? 70% of the economy is people keep spending their money. So they keep a little bit of an eye on that, you know? <laughs> well, if they're not paying attention to consumer credit. Yeah. That, so consumers are out spending, but they're yeah. not spending cash. Yeah. yeah. Well, the big rollover here today uh, seems to be in the gold market. So let's put up the gold and try to figure out why it made a brand new or not brand new high, but it went up and tested those highs, blew out uh, resistance at 2360. And now it's right back testing where it blew out from, which would be a logical thing to do. So really right around here would be about as far as you'd want it to drop if it's going to stay good, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what what's your call there? Let's start with, with Sunny and Sunny, what's your call on the gold? Well, I'm looking at my chart and I see a uh, down sloping trend line and, and a sideways trend line, horizontal. So I'm thinking it's going to come down and, and purple's on top in the dynamic moving average BMA. So I think it's going to come down to the lower inner band, which is at uh, right now, let's see, it's at 2338. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got gold so i'm hoping it's going to go up but i my analysis says not yet it almost seems like a, a run the stops above 2360 and mm -hmm. uh the people on the floor whoever does the other side now they're all short at 2400 and anybody who was short's been blown out so now they they got all their long positions uh, you know shorted at the higher point and now if it busts down you know they'd make all their money by you know clearing out those stops above 2360, which obviously were probably there. Because can you see 2360 was kind of resistance? Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. And then they brought it up uh, there for a day or so, and now all of a sudden it's right back in the soup. Now we have yeah. two equal bars, one up, one down. Yeah. Yeah. So but you would say that this neighborhood here, uh, and of course 2320 are very key neighborhoods to hold if you're still a bull, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm still yeah. holding on mine. And you do a lot of uh, cycle, cycle above two thousand, you know. So yeah. it, it's going to keep moving. Yeah, Michael, uh, with your cycle work and uh, and uh, wave work and uh, Fibonacci work, uh, yes. what are you, what are you seeing? I am seeing that, believe it or not, gold is just still in a box. Yeah, it's in a box, and right now, I, for whatever reason, I wasn't even really sure what propelled it to run back up to twenty four hundred. Um, but it it was a it was false, obviously. And I think so it was a, there was people thinking the rates were really going to drop because the PMIs have been lousy, and then the jobs report was kind of lousy, and they took jobs away that they gave us, and so uh, they figured out the job market's kind of weak, and that means you know Fed will be cutting, and once right. they cut the dollar, you know you notice the dollar. Well, we'll get in a minute here, but the dollar peaked out at one oh six, one oh seven, and has rolled over pretty good too. So yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Now let's go back to the gold and finish up our thoughts. Well, um, what I think here in gold is that it's still within, on an Elliott basis, a fourth wave correction, and it's been there mm -hmm. since bef when it hit twenty four fifty, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. It's still working out through this fourth wave, and still the markers for me in terms of levels that I think it can get to. The first is twenty three hundred, mm -hmm. twenty twenty two ninety nine to be exact. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I got from 2299 down to 2280. If they really want to push out any of the remaining longs, if they get down there, then we're looking at 2236 to 2220. Yeah. So if they do the same thing they just did to the shorts by going above 2360, grabbing them and then putting it down, they could do the same thing to the longs by bringing it under 2300, they could. grabbing they could. all their positions and then taking it up. Right. But I think longer term, um, yeah, gold is gold and you yeah. want it in your portfolio. Yeah. 
Uh, might as well flip over to that uh, dollar index and see if, in fact, uh, does it look like it uh, peaked out at 106, 107? And if we take out 104, uh, there's a gap down that's going to happen? Or hmm. Certainly, the RSI has gone into negative territory, so uh, the bears seem to be controlling it a little bit. Well, for the moment. Yeah, I mean, for the moment, yeah. Um, I think the dollar is just one of the hardest things to actually pinpoint right now. Yeah. I mean, I pull this out and I pull it out. But here again, look at the nature of the whole movement. I'm going back to when the dollar topped in October in October, and I'm looking at that one. So I'm on a daily screen, and you can go beyond that. I think it's in a wedge. It's in a triangle. And and the top of that triangle comes in at, again, that uh, October 2023 high, which is 107. So we, and but the whole triangle itself has been forming for quite a while. And I think that, well, we just finished a D and now we want A, B, and then we come down. I think we actually could come back to like 104, maybe even as low as 102, <clears throat> not be totally unhealthy, and then launch. I mean, the thing launches, the dollar explodes higher, and that could go along with that they choose not to lower rates. Yeah. But uh, Trump gets in there, you know, he's going to, you know, have that guy in front of him on day one saying, get those things down, wouldn't he? <laughs> the thing about um, the chart for the, here, I want to ask you a question here. Now, you know, if you go back to the way to the left hand side, you'll notice that it goes into a trading range here uh, with lower highs. And basically it's 114, 110, bust under 110. And it's Sayonara as the blue yeah. line starts turning down. Then again, yeah. We're in a trading range uh, over here at 106, 108, yeah. or 105, 107. Uh, chops around with some lower highs. R uh, blue line turns down and it's sayonara. Isn't, are we kind of, we got the high points over there in March and May, and then we got lower highs over here. And then you've got the blue line being penetrated now. You know, wouldn't you say if we break under the 104? Uh, and these red, blue, and gold star rolls. Could be a quick trip down. Yes, it, it could be. You know, because if they do cut rates, you know, these emerging market currencies are already going up. And then, like I say, uh, if we lose our yield advantage for whatever reason, right? Uh, you know, that would be a my my bottom trend line actually here. It comes in at one hundred one, almost one hundred two. Much yeah. much lower. Um, and, and this, yeah, so if long to me, as long as it stays inside, I think the wedge remains in play. If it comes down and touches that, and on my chart, on the weekly chart, I have the weekly 200 moving average, period moving average at 101.1617. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And the, there's a, a little bit of a weakness to it when you have those high points in, uh, April, May, and then you come down and then you come back up and you don't take out those high points. And now right. you're back right. on the defensive. I mean, it, and then your RSI is back under 50. It, 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 you know, but if they really do manage to get the dollar lower, boy, there are a lot of things are going to benefit. That's what I was going to say. The volatility between now and the end of the year and into next year, it should be very substantial. I agree, but just a lower dollar is going to benefit so many other uh, sectors within within our market. Yeah, markets, I should say, not necessarily just equities. But if there, there's, you know, I, I'm seeing somebody put a correlation between the Norwegian krona and the dollar, and what happens, uh, and how how crude gets affected. You know, just yeah. a lot of these outside influences that kind of come in and you're looking going like well what the heck what's going on it's because we're we're still you know the international currency of trade mm -hmm. as much as they want us to replace it by something else but that doesn't so we're still under the influence of a lot of that stuff and yeah Look at that one. It's well, here's weird. a let's yeah, let's connect it. I don't know how many people are going to trade the Norwegian Krone. So let's switch over to crypto, which may have a couple of more people interested. Uh, there you go. Uh, well, no, and that's just a, that's just they're talking about 
that if the dollar breaks against that, yeah, then then they're looking at crude again exploding. Yeah. Well, here's what I was going to bring up. Uh, yeah, and then again, uh, you know, I'm kind of a believer that the crude could go up into the hundreds if the uh, Goldman Sachs commodity index is going to fill the gap at 700 because half of the index is crude. But getting back to this thing here, this thing's really interesting because again, it's obviously connected to the dollar a bit, and that uh, Mount Gox uh, liquidation people, you know, because they finally got their money back in a settlement this month of July. Uh, that is going to be behind mm. us. And guys like Tom Lee, who have not exactly been uh, inaccurate, uh, he said uh, that he thinks it's going to double uh, by end of year. Um, and so that would mean this would be the time to really start finding out where the knife stops falling and seeing where it might be decent. Because you can see the RSI is on its dead bottom now. And it's actually even a divergence because you can see this new low is um, higher than the last low. So um, most people play this stuff. I don't know what these, uh, I mean, th there's two, two stocks uh, that I watch because they're optionable, COIN and MSTR. And let's just take a look and see, because they're optionable. The other two I'm going to mention are not optionable. So this thing here still could, uh, could go down towards yellow, I guess. It could. It's but, wedging. Uh, they're all wedging. You would say that if uh, you would say that, well, let's start out uh, with Sunny. Sunny, what's your feeling on this uh, uh, crypto or Coinbase or things like that? I'm, I'm looking at a chart of Bitcoin and it yeah. looks like to me that it's going to drop to 53,000. Okay. And then I think it'll bounce mm -hmm. and could even make new highs. I mean, I do think this thing's going to go really high at some point, 100,000, but I don't know if it's going to be before the end of this year. Well, I think what this guy Lee's thinking is, is that they are going to drop the rates because the economy and unemployment is going to turn bad. And if they drop the rates aggressively, because they'll panic like they do every time, uh, then that would cause the $6.2 uh, in money market to find out they're not earning the same interest they were. And mm -hmm. then if the dollar were to break 104, you've got lousy interest and a lousy dollar. And that might be the recipe to get everybody back into crypto. And there's probably a, a bunch of people short crypto here because it's coming down. So you'd have the short covering and you'd have the uh, fresh buying to blow away the sellers. And maybe that's how you'd get on the bicycle. Mm. Well, that's yeah. a possibility. But I do think it's got a little further down to go yeah. and yeah. then it will bounce again. Yeah. Michael, you're feeling on the, on the, the Bitcoin? I'm looking at a weekly <clears throat> chart, and the weekly chart gives it a little bit more room to the downside. And I have the 50 period moving average at 50,200. And so, right there, that beautiful blue line you got there, David. And it would really just put this beautiful ABC down. And so, what we're working on right now is just see how small it is. It's just a little four within the sea wave coming down and then and then 53 53,000 it absolutely sits in there and should provide some support um but i think if they do a wash which we know this is a lot they, these guys they took their cues on how to trade and get people lighting out of it from gold where right. you just you run it you go and go for the run and i think they could drop it real quick and this has always been the big boys come to play. And so when when they get too many players in there, they get stingy and they wash them out. And, I and that's a dramatic that's a dramatic divergence on RSI underneath. Because when we made those highs of seventy five grand, and then we came down, and then we went back towards seventy five grand, and, look at and that we, RSRI yeah. was like four miles underneath the last yeah. time. Yeah, that I mean, told you that it it had no legs. But and, and I don't disagree with a lot of the longer term <laughs> players that are basically talking that eventually they're thinking, I mean, I've heard people talk a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, but it's like saying that, you know, stocks are going to go to 10 billion. It's like, well, maybe, 
But right well, now, I mean, you know, when when Lee talks about it, he talks very mathematically. The S and P has earnings, and if the earnings are two eighty five, and then you get a uh, situation where they give you twenty or twenty two times earnings, that's how you get up towards six grand. I mean, that's how he was uh, talking back when we were at thirty five, thirty seven hundred, saying it's going to go to fifty three hundred. You know, you do take they do have earnings, and then it is a multiple of the earnings. Right. And so, uh, if the companies do make money, and they did make a lot more money than people thought. That's why you have this rally that and and they value the valuation has, you know, expanded. So yeah, you had yeah. expanding, expanding uh, P ratios uh, and you had good earnings. And that's how you get to where we were you know, or are. Right. Right. Earnings, right. Season's about to, earnings season's about to happen. We'll see. Yeah, what sure is. Time. Yeah. See, that's where that's where we're going to get action, because the uh, this uh, season they may uh, make it pretty good. But Q3 and four ahead is very difficult comps, meaning the uh, comps uh, in the second part of last year were much higher. That's why we had the rally at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And so basically the comps are different. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, the AI spend may dry up a little bit because it uh, was such a brisk pace. It would be almost hard to believe it could keep that pace, but it could. It could. I agree with you, Jim. I like the pretty hard to believe it could. But then you look at the numbers, you're like, oh, yeah, it could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where the freight train uh, comes in. Yes. Sir. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at the MSTR, which is another one where the guy um, Michael Saylor uh, issues debt and buys Bitcoin with the debt. Pretty aggressive guy. Well, of course, you can see the aggressive returns and volatility. Uh, you know, four hundred to two thousand is nothing to sneeze at. But then right back down to a thousand, then back up to eighteen hundred. So this is a this is not for the we uh, the uh, the weak of heart. You know. Faint of heart. Yeah, this one's uh, pretty choppy. Yeah. I mean, we go up, way up and then retrace a bunch of it and way up again and retrace a bunch of it. Yeah. But it's, well, like you say, the uh, Bitcoin itself went from like 10,000 to 75,000. So, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, this guy is obviously leveraged to it because he's uh, issued debt and bought Bitcoin with the money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if Bitcoin's going to do anything like Lee's talking about, this thing could, uh, you know, obviously blow out 2000 and get rolling again. I think it's going to come down to the bottom of that down move prior to this. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think it's going to come down to that level. Well, you know, these uh, both uh, coin and uh, MSTR are, are optionable. So uh, you could do your, uh, you know, pricing them out on big dips and then uh, look for some kind of a uh, out of the money call that's not too unreasonable. Because when they do move, both of these stocks do definitely have some volatility. huh? Yeah, I'm just wondering what the what the flow is in MSTR. I think we're going to come down to the bottom of that prior move and then bounce up again. Just playing. And uh, the two the two ETFs that I kind of look at, uh, GBTC for the Bitcoin, uh, Grayscale. And then uh, we'll look at Ethereum and see where they might make some sense. Yeah, you can see, you know, it went from eight bucks to um, 68 bucks. I mean, you know, yeah, when Bitcoin gets going... Uh, uh, Lee made another point that uh, 10 days a year are where you get most of the moves in Bitcoin. So oh, it, is the, it is the kind of deal. If you took those 10 best days out, uh, Bitcoin wouldn't be moving at all, hardly. So well, this grayscale, it's down yeah. it's, again. If you're just looking at it, if it's trading in a box, it's down at the bottom of the box. Close. Oh, oh it is because we've got a gap down. I didn't see that little. Yeah. It's, know, it's, right? it's, it's like, filling these gaps pretty good, which is good. And then, like I say, if they break the gold line, then they have some other gaps to fill. But, uh, you know, maybe if we get through the end of the month and it hasn't broken the gold line, which comes in, uh, where's the gold line coming in there? The 200 day? Yeah. 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 Well, they probably might be able to break that and get everybody out and then go. So you, you piqued my interest, Jim. Uh, which 10 days are those? Which one? Which one? Oh, <laughs> oh, which? No, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, no. What it, basically what's that saying? The same thing Motley Fool tells you about the stock market. You know, you keep trying to get in and out of it, and you, if you miss the best days, it affects your return dramatically. Well, in Bitcoin, it really affects your return dramatically. Yeah. And uh, let's look at Ethereum because uh, that one uh, is starting to get more. You know, uh, ETFs going. Uh, e T H E Ethereum E T H E. 
Oh, and a lot of people like this one a little better for different reasons. Yeah, this but, is the one that I trade, and it looks like it's hitting one of the tractors that goes across from, oh, where's this? February of this year. It will go across, 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 and make it a little bit lower low, which is the low of this week. And I think we'll bounce from there. Uh, well... The DNA histogram doesn't look like it's going to bounce. It wants it to go on further down. It's definitely purple bars below the zero line. And RSI, that's down below too. So it's going to take some happiness to get that to turn. Mm. Now, if there were to be a correction in August or September, mm. let's look at the Magnificent Seven because it's only going to happen if they crack those guys a little bit. So mm. let's put up, uh, we'll start out with Microsoft, MSFT. And let's go through these briefly and see if there's anything that would tell you, because again, this is how you know uh, a very large gain can happen is if in fact, you look at put options when something's way up there, and then they have a reversion back uh, back to the blue line. So the blue line comes in. The 50-day moving average is about uh, 430 something. Yeah. Okay. So anything here, you know, indicating that there could be any kind of reversion, or is it just uh, this way? On my chart, this is still above the upper outer band, upper mm -hmm. sunny band. Uh, saying there's no cell signal yet. It's still it's still pointing up. Mm -hmm. How about we turn towards um, uh, Google? They both come out uh, at the same day. I think the twenty third for uh, earnings. Yeah. Same answer with Google. It's yeah. So they're all in this. You know, they all like. And if we put up uh, uh, Amazon, AMZN. The same. Amazon broke same out. Story. Yeah. Um, Although Amazon has two red bars that are inside the upper outer band. Yeah. Uh, and that is the potential of it moving down to the DMA, which would be at 189.40. So that's like 10 points down if that continues. But I always say if it confirms, if price confirms. So we want to wait and see if price actually move down that direction and then go short. Yeah, you know, the one thing about short term weekly options, you know, a 10 point move can uh, dramatically affect some uh, very short term puts. So, uh, you know, you can't sneeze at a $10 move because on a short term option where your risk is limited, uh, sometimes those options can be pretty low priced. I had that experience with uh, Apple recently when it was down at uh, 195. 200 calls were very cheap. Then the 210 calls were very cheap. And then the 220 calls. And I recently did some 225s, which were cheap. So, you know, even stocks like that, you know, they're uh, on the weekly options. You can get into some pretty inexpensive ones. And if they move up like Apple has done, they can expand in premium dramatically. So if you, uh, if you really had a good idea that we were going back towards 189, uh, I'm sure there's a couple of puts at one, uh, maybe 197.50 or 195, even that, uh, are you know the, they could be reasonably priced. You have to check them out. Yeah, yeah. The RSI looks a little weird on it too, doesn't it, Michael? It does. But I was <clears> just <throat> looking at the uh, the July monthly, the August monthly, and the September monthly in Amazon, mm -hmm. and it is again packed full. Long calls, long calls. That's insane. Open interest. Yeah, and I'm talking like. 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220. So yeah. They're going and they're doing. And right now it's following through and everything. But if I, again, looking at Google, like we just did, looking at Amazon, <clears> like <throat> we are doing right now, <clears throat> they're coming off of those lows. I can't see the dates, but it's that green bar that kind of was a gap down and, and then it just kind of ran. Nope. Nope. Over more over to the to the right to the right to the right to to the wait that, that one this that one, one. Oh. Yeah. yeah so from there yeah. it looks like one two three and it's going to do a little four just like i'm looking for from the nasdaq and then we'll do a five and then be finished just like the nasdaq so i i think that you know those since they're controlling what the nasdaq is doing 
I believe that they're going to that they're also going to follow the Nasdaq as it corrects, but it's not going to be a big correction. Yeah, I mean, it will in terms if you're a trader. Yes, and in, in the in the Nasdaq itself, from where it's wherever it's going to top, which is right now, it's it's heading back up to test again, twenty thousand six seventy, twenty thousand six hundred seventy, and if we go look at where those April lows are. They're down at 17,000. So you're still looking at a very large drop. Yeah. If you could put Amazon back up, I just was going to point out the, uh, an example of uh, risk reward. You know, if you thought that this thing was going to pull back towards 190 um, by the end of the week, uh, the 195 puts are going for 81 cents. They've had wow. volume of over 10,000 contracts. Wow. And of course, if it goes to 190, it'll be intrinsically worth 500 bucks. Absolutely. And uh, even the 197.50s are going for 157 with 14,800 yeah. uh, volume. And, and you know so uh, those could be shorts. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm just trying to say people are trading it. I'm not, I don't know what they're doing net net. I'm saying there's people doing it. Yeah. Oh, no, you know, you're right. And the you're reason right. they're you're doing right. it is, is, you know, there's a lot of people who have $81 to risk on a, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, on, uh, but on a stock that's the, going it, for 19500 you know. Right. It's just the call heavy. It's the call heavy stuff. Yeah. Well, like I say, that's why the contrarian thing is interesting to me, but I need a little evidence. You know, I can see uh, there's some RSI there that tells me this thing's running out of steam. I think you just got and, some evidence. That and no, well, now I just have to look at my short-term moving averages on my short-term graphs to get something that's pointing down because I don't, you know. But, but the beauty of it is if you're dead wrong, you're out 81 cents uh, per option, 81 <laughs> bucks total on one contract. And, you know, that means, what, the, you, that means you can't go to Skomas this night, you know, to have a, a beer. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you got my attention. I'm going to go buy some. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, or uh, Sunny's area, you can't go to the Marine Room over in La Jolla there. There you go. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, <laughs> all right. So anyway, yeah. So that gives a little idea of these things are very, very high now. Let's uh, switch because we're running out of time a little bit. I, at this point, I just want uh, each of you guys to introduce yourself and maybe go over something that you think is uh, is very interesting right now on your uh, that you're seeing on your Sunny Bands or on your stuff. So uh, Sunny. Let's uh, put your chart up and let's talk about uh, maybe a market that you see very interesting right now. And then also uh, let people know how they can get a hold of you. All righty, we can do that. Uh, let's see, I've been trading for 43 years. I love to mentor people. So give me a call. My phone is 760-908-3070. Uh, that's my cell phone. So don't call during this presentation. <laughs> but uh, let's see, I'm an easy language person programmer as well. I do custom programming and I'm the author of eight best-selling books. Uh, I do sunny side of the street every weekend. I have a live trading room on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific and every day for people who subscribe. And I've got a free podcast of famous gurus. So if you want to join Trade Along with Sunny, otherwise known as Taws, text me, T-A-W-S to my uh, phone number that I just gave you. Just text T-A-W-S and I'll get you in there. And if you want sunny side of the street, type S-S-S. So one of those. Now, as far as Amazon, do you have an opinion on that you want to share? Yeah, I do. Hang on one second. There we go. I put that in the chat. Uh, Amazon, you see these boxes around prices here? blue boxes and red boxes yep can you see my screen yep yes okay yeah it looks good that's a new indicator called boxes in boxes so the daily chart is the the uh, candles and then the weekly chart is the yellow box around the candles it shows you what a week looks like and the blue box is the monthly so you can tell at a glance where the short-term, medium-term, and long-term trends are. So that makes life easy. I, you know, I'm, my indicators are, are all about making life easy for me. So we'll take that off for now. Boxes and boxes, status at all. Okay. So on Amazon, it looks like it could be a potential sell signal here, but it would have to come down below. This is a daily chart. 
it would have to come down below the uh, upper inner band. So right. Upper inner band. If it comes down below that, we're going on down. Otherwise, we're going to continue on up. That was a pretty critical point. Good thing to keep an eye on. Yeah. All right. All right. And again, uh, you know, that's how people get a hold of you, moneymentor.com and your phone number you gave. So that's great. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Michael and see if he has, a, uh, if he shares his screens, if he had something uh, on his mind here that he could share uh, that he thinks is kind of uh, interesting right now. And of course, um, a little background on yourself and um, and what you can do for people when they contact you. I, I will. I just want to go down and hold on a second. I gotta move this so <laughs> I can share my screen. Share my screen. And I want to do, I'm going to trust it's going to be this one. Um, no, it's this one. So if I'm going to go there, it's going to show up. And then I just got to bring my think of swim screen. Come on there now you can you see my screen got it yes okay good all right so let me bring it over fully um <clears throat> i'm just actually going to talk about the um get this out of my way the i just want to talk about the s p because i want to show that the whole what what really has been building here this is october of 2022 so we've been in what is known as a primary fifth wave up now, originally, I thought it was different, but, you know, that's why you always, as an Elliotician, you have a preferred count and an alternate count. The alternate count at the time gets switched, and now is the preferred. So we're still in this primary fifth wave, and that's the one that predicts way up here. So those larger levels. So right now, what we're working on, these are all going to be step stones, right? So with inside of that are going to be five waves in the yellow, five waves in the in the orange color, five waves in each one of these in between. So where are we in this whole thing? Well, we're in the third of this level, which is intermediate. We're finishing the third of the minor. And within that, and the three of three, that's the strongest part of any move. So all of this rally is not so stunning. The fact that they're just pushing, keep pushing can be, but it fits the overall pattern. So I'm looking for this, this fifth wave to finish. And within it, I got another fifth wave to finish. So here's my markers. First one being 5664. That's where I think we're headed for right now. And I think it should contain it. If it breaks, then we got 5760. That's our next level. Does that say that's where it has to go? No. It's a fib. That's giving you an indication of what the power could take it to. So, and then I got this one out here for the third, for that minor third, which I'm looking for, which is 56. 80. Doesn't necessarily mean it has to go there, but it coincides with this pretty well. So we're kind of wrapping this all up, and I'm thinking this week. So maybe the banks give us that little boost we get up there. But then the next thing I'm looking for, folks, is just a correction. And here's the window. This is where I think it pulls back to. So from and if it gets to 57 you're talking about getting back to those april lows so in the s p it'll be a 700 point drop that's a lot that's a, that's if it gets all the way up to here if it gets to 56 it's still going to be 700 point move it's it's a big drop back down and it's extremely that's tradable that's my point it's very very tradable but it's not the end of the world so my concept of what I was telling you before is that is it going to come down, go back up? So it goes, comes down in a minor four that completes the minor four of this color, goes back up at a minor five, completes the third of this color, and comes back down to the same area, then flows again. That's what I'm talking year end. And then that's when if they start to finish this level, much, much, much larger correction will be confronting the United States. Now, and you guys don't ask because there's 10,000 things that go can create it and make it happen. But it, here's my targets, 62 to 66. Those are my upside targets. But in the near term, 56, uh, 80, uh, yeah, could, 56, could be a temporary, it could 56, be a temporary uh, spot. Yeah, 56, 50, 56, 56, 80. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Give it a nice window. Yeah. And it should be pretty strong to be asked with you because I got 
I got this fifth, I got this five, and I have the third from here, all lining up right into that area. So it, it all fits pretty cleanly. And then we get our pullback. So um, can I just toss out a special offer? Sure. Okay. So those of you, that if you, if you follow me, you know that I also have a trade room. And that trade room is, I run it together with my colleague, Sasha Goring. He happens to be over in Germany. And he did say hello. Hello back to you, Sasha. And I just want to say that we are day traders. So we're day trading the NASDAQ. And, and so what we're doing is we're really breaking this mm. down to a 15 minute, a five minute, a two minute chart. And we have breakout levels and, and we have all kinds of different things that we operate on a very, very tight pattern, which we're getting in the NASDAQ. And um, I'm just gonna give a shout out to Sasha because I'm telling you, this is somebody that can work fibs and work levels and knows how to read candlesticks. And so it, we're offering our trade room for the month of July. And I believe you still can get a part of it. If not, and you decide you're gonna join and it doesn't come through, I will refund the difference, but I'm giving the month of July for uh, $200. And you can go to www.tradershelpingtraders.com. And then within that, you will find a, a, a tab and the trade, trade room tab. And then you should be able to find, uh, I think the special hasn't been taken down. If it hasn't, it should still be valid and you can get it for $200. Sounds good. You. That sounds excellent. Uh, as far as option professors concerned, uh, what I'm doing, uh, we have an options masterclass we put together with the guys up at tradingindicators.com. And you can get the uh, options masterclass, which is three sessions and six hour comprehensive class. Uh, which normally goes for three ninety seven. You can get it absolutely free if you sign up for a uh, options alert that I have, where basically I'm familiar with all the different options, but I'm trying to scan for the ones that I think are very low priced, like we just mentioned on the puts or something like that, that are very low priced with limited risk that can expand dramatically. So that if you do have risk capital to buy options, we're looking for ones that could really grow and, and really explode in premium because the volatility hits after we do it. Simpl you know, the, if something is down, like my uh, Apple was down for a while at 165, you know, those out of the money calls really got rolling as we went up to 225. So we're looking for those type of opportunities on the daily alerts. So the, uh, the alerts uh, basically uh, normally go for uh, 197 a month. We have a special offer for only 97 uh, when you sign up and uh, I can get you a link for you to do that. And again, that includes a, um, a three session, six hour options masterclass. So you know a little bit about more of what you're doing. Uh, to get it, you go to optionprofessor.com, O-P-T-I-O-N, professor.com. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Sonny. Thanks a lot, Michael. I, we went over a lot of good stuff here today, a lot of exciting stuff with earnings coming dead ahead. So this is a good time to get your information going. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to David. Thanks a lot for being here, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. All right. Yeah, a lot of good info today. So um, uh, we were trying a, a slightly updated format. So if you have any feedback about that, feel free to let me know. Um, you can reply to any Timey Research email or go to the contact page on timeyresearch.com if you have any feedback about this or anything else on the shows or events. So, uh, and just a quick reminder, uh, be sure to su subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube or Substack or your favorite podcast app to get all to get the recordings, uh, also access to any of the past shows or presentations. And uh, I just wanna thank my guests again for today, Michael Filigera of logicalsignals.com and tradershelpingtraders.com and Sonny Harris of moneymentor.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks Thank David. You, David.